At times, we all feel lost in search of something more. This is Christina Dam, and this is the Liberate the Podcast, a podcast designed to help inspire and guide you forward through everything spirituality, creativity, art, and just giving you a sense of empowerment so that you can be powerful, be magical, and be free. Hi, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Liberate the Podcast. Today, we're welcoming Katie Hess. Now, she is the author of Flower Evolution, and she also has this amazing line of Lotus Way, their personal flower botanics and elixirs, and they have been kind of featured all over from O. Uh, from on O to Oprah Magazine to LA Times and and you know so they've been getting a lot of press on that but it's because this is an old very ancient but new really exploding uh, kind of technology of the power of flower essences so I want to Welcome, Katie. And we're going to be talking about flower essences. And you guys know how the podcasts go. We always kind of start one way and we kind of just go into every way. So thank you for joining us today, Katie. Oh my gosh, it's such a pleasure to be here. Thanks for seeing us. Yes, such a pleasure. And I know you're going to be doing a couple classes with us too and, and have some things going on. But um, let's share a little bit about, you know, I like to always hear the journey of how somebody starts out and really, you know, because I mean, you've really built this empire of botanicas and and uh, elixirs. And so how did you even get into it? Let's start there. Like, where does your story begin? I mean, the short story is like, I don't know if it's a short story, but I'll try to make it short. When I was, I was an only child. When I was seven, I had this kind of like ugh, crisis of like, how do I find my people? And I should be working somewhere else. I should be like doing some big project. And the only reason why I mentioned that is because it was like such a sense of urgency to me. Mm -hmm. Like I would, you know, try to do astral projection and like project myself wherever I needed to be. So it's like from age seven until I graduated college was all this kind of like pent up waiting energy. So that by the time I finally graduated college, I was like, ah, what am I here to do? Really? So and even, even, even that early, you're feeling that. Yeah, for sure. So and I loved nature. Like as an only child, trees and flowers were my best friends and being out in, in nature was like everything, but you know, I never expected to work with it as a profession. Yeah. So, so it wait, wasn't until, yeah, so yeah. I went graduated college then I was like also it was like at this time where people were like getting cell phone bills and mortgages and car payments and I looked around and I was like hmm uh you know liberal arts major you know like what, what am I gonna do uh and then I looked at people like getting in all these like bills and debts and like like commitments but yeah. also being there hating their jobs and mm. I was like I can't do that I've got to figure out First, what it is I'm supposed to be doing while I'm here. And second, you know, it, I want to like devote myself to that before I get locked into something that I don't like. Yeah. So I ended up going to, I mean, I had already been an exchange student for several years in Europe. Okay. So I was like kind of used to being on the, on the road. And at that point I was like, hmm, I'll go to Mexico and be a volunteer. And I did that. And in my free time, I just started studying everything I could find under natural remedies. I ended up running into this woman, this indigenous woman handing out flyers on an empty street. Um, she was handing out flyers about this expert coming from Spain in flower remedies. And I was like, wow, this is pretty interesting. I should go. But like super bizarre, right? Because I, I remember looking at the flyer and usually you just want to like toss them in the trash. But I was like, whoa, this is actually something I'm interested in. And I turned around to look for her and she was gone. And I ended up like running in my flip flops up and down the cobblestone streets looking for this woman to ask her for more info. And it was like she vanished. So did you ever find her or no? You I just never had the found her. Yeah, I just took it as a sign. And I was like, I got to go meet this guy in Mexico City, which was three hours away. And that just like broke open a whole world. And as soon as I met him, I was like, OK, I'll do this for the rest of my life. Wow. See, I knew you had to have a story, right? You know, that, but, 
the mystery and listening to the signs and feeling that impulse. I mean, you, you weren't sure where you were going. And I hear that so often. And sometimes people just like, okay, I know I don't want to do this, right? But where and what? And you just were following your heart. And then it was literally a flyer falling into your lap or handed into your hand. And, and that feeling that there's something here to this, right? And even most people would dismiss it. They couldn't find the woman or it's three and a half hours away. Do I really want to do that? You know, like, what is this event? And it might find their way into the garbage, but you didn't. You said, you know what, let me, let me, let me figure out a way to get there. Let me go. And mm -hmm. the moment that you met that teacher, you knew that there was something to it. And then look at what that's turned into. Mm -hmm. I mean, right? Well, he planted a seed in me that, you know, and honestly, what's crazy is I haven't seen him since 2001, 2000, 2001. So that's like 22 years I haven't seen him. I don't even know if he knows, like, I'm not sure if he knows about me or not. You know, I could have just been like a student who came and went and he has no idea that all of this got created. Um, but he said one thing that was like a seed that has stuck in me since then. He said, if 3% of the world's population, which probably I'm guessing the percentage is probably smaller now. It's like one or two. Um, if, but he said, if 3% of the world's population were actively working with these flower remedies, it would create enough of a ripple effect around the planet that it would change the future for us. Wow. So that tripped my trigger of the like the seven-year-old that was like looking for this big mission of something I was supposed to be doing in a way that I was supposed to be helping. It's like, ding, you know, it was like, oh, this is it. And then I can bring this back to the United States and I will devote the rest of my life to getting that 3%. But, you know, and then afterwards I moved back to the States and that was like in the early 2000s and yoga wasn't cool and meditation wasn't cool and flower essences were certainly not cool. So it was like a kind of a long uphill road, but um, I yeah. regretted it. But that long uphill road gave you time to really master and understand and dive in and create and the world caught up with you. Right. You know? Yeah. It's now it's kind of like one of the number one trending things. I mean, the I'm, I'm like, you know, because I opened my my first store like 13 years ago when spirituality and new age stuff wasn't wasn't hip even in L.A. You know, it was kind of this weird hooey wooey stuff that people are like kind of almost like thinking that they would get like cursed by the devil if they stepped into the store. And I'm like, uh, you see, it's like all like fun and light colors and happiness here, you know. But, you know, there was that stigma. But then now I'm like shocked to see like, you know, 10 year olds like coming in like being like oh TikTok, TikTok this and like this and that like everything and like they know more about crystals than i do you know or and i'm like how how <laughs> you know like but it's it's so beautiful to see and the same you know and then like with companies spearheading and really making a ripple effect like some of those mlm companies you know with with essential oils that really like kind of are started to make a wave and then you know it, it's now now becoming common you can walk into even like a freaking regular like store and see like sage or essential oils it's like what is going on this is so cool you know mm -hmm. yeah it changed a lot right yeah and so, so tell me about like some of the, you know, when you started working with them, so you got the seed planted, you realized that there was something to it. Did you feel the effects when you were down there, when you were working, I'm sure you were sampling. And so you had this like visceral. Oh yeah. I mean, and the, I mean, my philosophy has always been, and so was my teachers is, is like healer, heal thyself. Right. Yeah. So it's like, our, I mean, you know, this too, I'm sure it's like our businesses can only be as good as we are. Like the effort that we're putting in, the personal growth work that we're doing, that directly impacts the business. And the business will also like show us our demons and our shadows and the stuff we need to work with. Um, so yeah, absolutely. I have taken flower essences consistently, regularly, recklessly um, for 20 some years. Yeah, and I think, you know, to what you said, to your point about essential oils, I think with flower remedies, you know, which of course are different from essential oils and don't have a scent. Yeah. We're at like 
probably where essential oils were maybe like in the um, 80s, mm-hmm. 90s. You know, like maybe some hippie moms were using lavender oil, but my mom wasn't using essential oils with me. Yeah. You know, it was just kind of growing. But now, like every mom knows what essential oils are. Mm-hmm. So I think, and then I think like what you were saying due to social media and people just being really open, it'll be kind of a faster trajectory that more and more people will become accustomed to working with. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Which so that, that brings up a good point. Cause I'm, I'm sure that a lot of people um, might want more clarification on the differences because, you know, flower essence, yeah, no smell, the vibrational frequency, but how do you describe it? And what would you say is like the biggest um, distinction. Yeah. So, I mean, we work with essential oils as well. I love them. It's like yeah. such a gift. Oh my God. I mean, and just thinking like 40 roses had to go into one drop of rose oil, you know, it's like a <laughs> tremendous teacher of preciousness and appreciating, you know, whoever grew the roses and harvested and distilled and like, that's just a whole other world. Um, yeah. So we we use them a lot in our products, especially because when we first started, like I said, people didn't know what the internal remedies were. So we had to kind of mix and pair and sneak mm-hmm. them where we could. <laughs> yeah. Um, but flower essences, I think of, you know, first like the history all over the world, you see medicine men and women, shamans, doctors prescribing their patients to go out into the wild and drink the dew drops from the tops of specific flowers. Mm-hmm. So essentially it's just the dew drop scaled into a bottle so that we can bring nature in versus having to go out. Oh, I like that. The dew drop scaled into a bottle. I think that's the best way that I've ever heard it described. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and then they, you know, they work through acupuncture meridians. So it's like acupuncture without the needles. And actually, we're literally working with a whole group of acupuncturists now, some of which are saying, I don't even need my needles anymore, which is fascinating. Um, You know, and it's something I think that over the years, people have been really skeptical. And I welcome that because I love critical thinkers. But I always come back to like, how on earth does our cell phone work? Yeah. Like if if we believe that all this information is being transmitted on invisible waves through space, then don't we yeah. think Mother Nature also has like botanical Wi-Fi? Yeah, exactly. No, that's so good. I mean, even like look at right now, we're sitting here, different environments, making and seeing each other, right? Hearing each other. In real time, I'm speaking and it's going to outer space and back and you're able to see my facial expressions and hear my voice paired together. It's like, it's insane. And that's, I I love that you said that because so many people find themselves skeptical about, you know, many different alternative healing remedies, right? Mm -hmm. And but when you think about even the things that are used in the day to day, I mean, I still don't understand how electricity works, right? You know, but I turn on a light switch and suddenly there's power, you know, how did it get here? Like it came from some kind of power plant wherever on a little string that you see hanging outside, like, and suddenly now I have lights and then, yeah. Truly, truly. And mother nature was the way we used it's even like another step of that. If we can use this technology of the cell phone or the different things, like you said, mother nature created all of the elements that we were able to harvest in that and Mm -hmm. created the intelligence of the person or group of people to put those elements together to create that. Right. So wouldn't it be more intelligent, you know, Well, and there's this aspect of mother nature that's really, that's exponential, which I find the most exciting, which is, you know, like you could say flower remedies is a good illustration of that because it's like the more dilute it is, the more powerful it is. The more you make dilutions like in homeopathy with that basically sun tea that you've made of a fresh flower, the more dilute it is, the more powerful it is. Like I just still can't really wrap my head around how that works. Yeah, And then when you look at like the forest bathing studies coming out of Tokyo and they're showing like if you and I went camping together and we spend one day out in the wild and then we come home, 
we get that elevated white blood cells, like boosted immune system and the lowered adrenaline cortisol um, for a week. But if we stay camping out in the wild for two days, that those beneficial effects last in our body for a month. So there's this like exponential power of nature that I find so fascinating. That's so cool. I didn't even know that. But I do know that every time I hike and stuff like that, I feel that radiate through my body. It lasts way more than the hour or two hour hike, right? Mm -hmm. But that's fascinating. So, so this exponential ability. So then how is, how, how do you translate that into working with some of your elixirs? Yeah, it's almost like it almost turns into magic at a certain point because you like it's very simple, but it's also kind of magical. Right. Because it's like if we put down a bunch of flower photographs and then we had people, you know, pick the one or two or three that you're most drawn to. Okay, now we'll tell you what those are for. Inevitably, people are like, I feel so seen because we'll always move towards what we need the most in the moment. And so when you read that description of what those flowers do, it's like, wow, you know, I feel so understood. And then you move to like actually taking it and working with it. And there's a kind of a whole other bunch of things that could happen from like noticing different things about your reality around you or going through a little mini healing crisis where you feel like a anguish of something and then you feel it release and then you feel better. Um, you know, or to like using them over time and watching your whole life start to like turn in a different direction, like different job, different friends, different people, different based on what's being reflected back to you from your internal changes. Interesting. And would you say that it also follows that exponential? So if somebody takes it once, they're going to have a little effect. If somebody takes it for, you know, a couple of weeks, they're going to have this magnified effect versus like, you know, a month or two months or however long it's needed, you know? Oh, yeah, 100%. I mean, I have case studies. I don't see clients anymore uh, much, but um, the first 10 years I was just doing one-on-one consults. And so I gathered a ton of information and I would watch people like, I mean, you'd be amazed like this uh, literally should be a reality show because even just after a month of working with flower remedies, you see people's faces change, their body language, they look younger, their stories change, more confident, more rooted, more self-trusting. Um, but then after about four months, you start to see the shifts occur in their life. And then, you know, we've tracked people like 10 and 20 years. Wow. And, and there's just such a, it's almost like a choose your own adventure book. You just kind of keep going down this other path that takes you to a better place because it's like you at your best self all the time. If you were to like, like everybody has ups and downs, right? Mm -hmm. But if you were to kind of eliminate the days when you feel crabby or useless or unfulfilled or down in the dumps, if you were, if you could eliminate those days and just have more days where you're like on fire, where you, you know why you're here or you know how you want to be of service obviously that's going to be like a whole different trajectory in your life. Yeah. And that's what we're essentially doing is taking as many people as possible and like putting them on the best, their best self kind of trajectory. And then the insane part, which is the exponential part is like, what happens when you do that with a group of people? It's not just isolated to those people. Yeah. Like that's impacting their families and their friends and their colleagues. And then that's when that kind of ripple effect thing starts that we talk about. So, you know, one of my questions for you were the impact of it. But I mean, basically what you're saying is that these essences and, uh, you know, they can change not only how you look physically, how you feel energetically, Mm -hmm. but then to start to have this ripple effect into all areas of your life and not to be limited you know Mm -hmm. so you're saying that you've you've seen through clients and case studies you know changing career changing friendship groups changing hobbies changing life right Mm -hmm. so it all starts with a few drops Mm -hmm. and suddenly those few drops magnify and shift everything you know Mm -hmm. so would you say one of the biggest things that is what's happening to the physical body okay i mean i i I, I get it, but just to d- describe, like, what what's happening when these people are taking, you know, 
It's like when you put the hair dryer in the bathtub, right? It's like, woo, don't do that because the electricity moves very quickly through water. But when you look at the very subtle electricity that's being emitted from a flower, which is how bees and flowers communicate, they've shown that bees are not attracted to flowers based on color or scent. There's literally an electrical communication occurring between the two. So that's what we're capturing is that subtle electrical frequency that's essentially life force. Uh It's what makes you feel so awesome when you're in the forest versus just like hooking up to an oxygen machine, you know? Yeah. Um, And then it's moving through your meridians, your chakras, your nadis. Uh Uh, Not really like it's tricky for me to talk about what exactly happens in your physical body because we're not really supposed to talk about those things. (laughs) Um, (laughs) But I can say that we've had people um, have reduced headaches or they move from like constipated all the time to just easy going because they're letting go of things, right? Yeah. Emotionally. Uh, we've had women who haven't had their periods or have really painful periods after a month, like, like nothing, no pain at all. Um, we've had folks like have their immune systems greatly boosted so that they can counteract whatever's coming at them. So there are, or like blood pressure, you know, there are physical markers. We don't usually talk about that, but the cool thing that I'd like to think about is mm, what are we preventing? Yeah. Like there are probably a million things that you won't get if you're working with flower essences regularly in your future. So really it's like smoothing things out now so that down the line in the future, you, you've you uprooted all those emotional and mental things that you wanted to just stuff under the rug. And that's when we get sick is yeah. when we repress things, right? So you just are like more capacity, more ability to be comfortable in your own discomfort, more ability to look at the things that are limiting us, more ability to be compassionate with those parts of ourselves that we're like, God, I don't like that part. Yeah. And as our capacity grows, it uproots those kind of knots in our etheric body so that they never have to become the red flags in the physical body, they never manifest in the physical body as it is. You enjoying this so far? Did you forget to subscribe? Make sure to do so. It takes two seconds. Just press that little button, the red one, you know, the one. Just press it, little like. All right, enjoy the rest of this content. So, so preventing and aligning. And so what I'm hearing is like, it's really, you know, when you think of like a flower, at least when I think of a flower, I think of this beauty and like the rose doesn't look over and say, I wish I was a tulip. And the tulip doesn't say, if only I was a daisy, you know, they just bloom. And there's so much, you know, I think animals and people alike are sometimes stopped in their tracks at the beauty and the awe of the different colors or the petals or just how they are, you know? And and in that, it's this close essence of perfection manifested in form, right? Mm -hmm. And so, you know, what I'm hearing is like, you know, as an energy healer and and a person that works with all different types of things is that it's almost as if because you are, are now inviting and having these frequencies in you, you get a bloom and blossom and be the best you. And so wherever there's blocks, wherever there was dis-ease, wherever there was lower frequencies, and then it kind of makes me think of also um, the Schumann residence. Are you familiar with the Schumann residence that the earth vibrates to a frequency of 7.8 hertz? Uh, and so they, they've measured the, um, the electromagnetic pulse of the earth. And when they measure kids like seven and under, they tend to vibrate at that just naturally. And then when they get into people that they tested in big cities, they're all over the place, you know, and, you know, from ne- from lower numbers to higher numbers and everything in between. And but it's bringing back that basic harmony so that you can be the best version of you. Is that is like if I simplified it into that, like, you know, nugget, would that be? Yeah, absolutely. And I think that from 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 my experience and from watching other people, there's so much potential that each of us has as a human being that that like there are so many things that we're good at that we don't even know we're good at. Like case in point, my roommate, 
um, she's in her fifties and Mm -hmm. she just picked up weaving like out of nowhere. And she's like amazing at it. You know, like she would have never guessed that weaving, she would be good at it or excited about it. Mm. Or like, I would have never guessed that I would become good at business or I don't know any of the other things, you know? So like when you think, okay, am I the most, like, have I maxed out my potential? Like no one ever says that. Like innately, we know there's more, we know we can be more fearless and patient and loving and bold. And so it's about kind of like pushing ourselves to the edge a little bit so we can like manifest that potential from within ourselves. It's beautifully said. And I see all of your beautiful blends behind you and essences <laughs> behind you. Do you mind talking about a few of your favorite ones, or the ones that you're most excited about and the difference between the botanicas and the elixirs? And, you know, I see that you also have some sprays on the top too, you know, just sharing a little bit more. Yeah. So we work with the traditional elixirs that are taken internally. It's like a honey alcohol water base. Mm-hmm. We just put them in all our drinks or you can put them, use them in by mouth as well. Um, and then we blend the flower essences together with the essential oils for mists and, um, you know, like for spraying yourself and anointing oils, which is kind of like a natural perfume. Yeah, so Here. hold it up. Let people see. I mean, we, we have way more people listening to it on our podcast format than, than our YouTube really kind of sucks right now. Sorry, YouTube. But we're trying to work on building that visual audience base, you know. <laughs> but, um, you know, it's nice for people to see. Yeah. yeah, and it's like we've tried to, like, build. We have bath salts and all the different kinds of things. And we try to build out this little suite of, like, the things that you're going to want to use multiple times a day, because it's more powerful, the more often you use it. And then that will get you a moment to just like, oh, like, oh, I just put that oil on and it smells good. That's one of the ones, the essential oils. So you have that mini moment to like, oh yeah. And then underneath you have the flower remedies that are working through your, through your system to do whatever they're meant to do. And how does somebody know which one to start working with? It's literally as easy as going to our website and picking the quiz and choosing the flowers that you're most attracted to, or you can get yeah, a flower just- card deck. But, you know, there are a lot of ways, but the visual way for me, I feel like is the best because you don't overthink it. Yeah. So going back to those pictures and just going with that and then, you know, uh, trusting that whatever they're drawn to, that is the right one for that time period. Ah, mm-hmm. oh, awesome. And now you do classes and workshops. Can you even talk about a little bit about what people learn, what they get out of things like that? You know, like, you know, because you, you, you shared a little bit about how you kind of moved away from doing one on one. So you're really focused on the product lines, but also, you know, continuing this ripple effect in, in bigger platforms, right? You know, through more people than one on one. So um, let me hear about this new journey that you're on. Yeah, and we we actually do. It's funny because we don't do. I don't really do a lot of one on ones, but sometimes we do two on ones or three on ones, or you know, we do um, like flower ceremonies and smoke offerings, and um, you know, where we'll spend like three hours with someone, and there's multiple practitioners, and we're all working together on someone, which is really nice. Oh, that's so cool! Yeah, yeah, um, something that hit from all angles. I love it. But then like online, we have uh, like education classes that people can do at their own pace and learn about flower essences. Um, And then um, we do a lot of classes actually here at the Self-Arising Nature Center in Phoenix, Uh, Mm -hmm. specifically targeting practitioners like naturopathic doctors and acupuncturists and different types of healing practitioners. Um, Because right now we're really focused on creating that army that's going to yeah. yeah, we're going to get the, you're going to get the 3% and more, you know? <laughs> um, so we do, we teach like methods of helping your clients or your patients, um, like, you know, how to understand them through the lens of flower essences and, and like what themes are popping up and what are people feeling these days and which flowers can we connect them to? And what are some simple rituals with oils that, that you can apply to your body or certain, you know, TCM points on your body so that you can feel dramatically different within a minute or two. Wow. So 
So it's, it's almost like working with those acupuncture points, right? Or those meridians and you're, and you're using like all of that information say, okay, well, this is going to get you there just that much faster. You're going to have that response. I find it so cool. Yeah. I mean, maybe, you know, maybe you go for acupuncture once a month or something as a tune up, but if you can do a little ritual each day or a couple times a day that nourish you and fulfill you and it's kind of like a tiny tune up. Yeah. You're just like way ahead of the game. Oh, that's amazing. And and I want to bounce back a little bit. And, uh, you know, you shared a few things on like the overarching of like case studies that, you know, you did when you were looking at people in the in the general like, OK, this is what changed kind of or these are the things that I noticed over 10 years or 20 years. But what about specifically without sharing like maybe somebody's identity? But what are some things that you noticed um like particular, like somebody comes in, they, when you were doing far more one-on-ones or maybe some of the two-on-ones or three-on-ones that you're currently still doing, but, um, you know, somebody coming in because, and, and what happened, what shifted, how quickly has it shifted, you know? I mean, it's funny because, I mean, I can, t- I can share stories from, from doing one-on-one consultations, but even just like, I got letters this month. You know, it's like it never ends, which is it's a part of what no, I... No, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, I'm sure you have a lot, you know. I just want to, you know, have people here so they can concrete it a little bit more to be like, oh, wow, that resonates with me. Maybe there's a couple different stories that you can share that I, help. There was a woman who wrote in this week, and and this is without my input, right? This is, she's just taking the remedies on her own. Um, she wrote in and said, this is, she emailed us and said, oh my God, these remedies saved my marriage. And she named off you know, all the kind of things that were going on between she and her husband and his behavior and her behavior and how it was just kind of spiraling out and then how it, uh, you know, put itself back together. And, and she said it just like that. These flower remedies saved my marriage. Wow. And, then, and then in the same month, I get this beautiful, like, handwritten card snail mail to me. And I'm sitting at my desk reading it. And the woman basically outlines which particular flower essence blend that she feels causes her divorce and why she feels like that was a good thing and Mm. why it was like a long time coming and she finally put down some boundaries and her husband like made the first move. She was just like, enough is enough. And then he was like, I want a divorce. And she was like, yes. Um, So like, well, yeah, like, I mean, people, you know, like when people hear this, that's good that you share that as an example, because oftentimes, like when you were sharing before, it's like what things need to clear and change out of your life so that you can blossom and bloom, you know, to use that metaphor, you know, and sometimes things are weeds that are literally suffocating us, you mm-hmm. know, and they need to go, then you get out of there, right? And so um, change is good. Releasing is good. Yeah. That, you know, sometimes maybe it is healing a marriage and sometimes it is walking away from somebody that has been holding you back and they're both equally as beautiful. Right. And, and I mean, gosh, in the last two years, like the themes that have arisen is just totally different from before, you know, like probably before I would have told you like this example of a woman who was taking flower essences for 10 years and she got off all pharmaceuticals, antidepressants, anti-anxiety medications without my probing at all. I don't say anything, you know, that's not my place. Um, And she changed professions and where she lived and her husband, they were kind of, they were also going on a crash course. Um, They started a band together. And like the crazy part is that he never took flower essences, but if you look at the before and after pictures, you can see it, dramatically impacting him it's like it just removes this kind of layer of suffering and also trying to cover up the suffering and trying to pretend you're happy mm-hmm. to just like totally vulnerable and totally yourself yeah um, but well, like it's so close in vibration too you know and there's so much connected within two people that share in a union space right they're next to each other they live together they sleep in the same bed that you know you, it, that's gonna impact you know like sure yeah so, then, so the secret to changing others is taking the, the flower essences <laughs> it's working on yourself totally <laughs> yeah and then and then in the last couple of years you know we've seen I mean I'm sure you've also seen something similar where it's like either people went through 
a really stressful period of their life regarding the world events, let's say, mm-hmm. or if they felt like, you know, I'm not really that connected to the world events. I, I don't really watch the news. I, I'm not really, you know, whatever. Then they were the people that had like deep, personal, painful challenges come up. So it's like kind of everybody's been through the ringer in the last couple of years. Mm -hmm. And I've seen flower essences, like it's almost like my understanding of them has evolved and changed as I watch all of us change, which is like, I see them rooting people into their sense of self-trust and knowingness. Like I don't need a doctor or a TV show or a celebrity or anybody outside of me to tell me what I need. I feel it. I feel it inside of me what I need. Yeah. I've seen people become like ostracized from their families, you know, because of X, Y, Z on, on either end of the yeah. deal. Right. Um, I've seen people feel like they don't belong or mm-hmm. go through fear periods or rage periods yeah. or uncertainty or where do I belong or the whole unknown. Right. Yeah. Um, so it's been interesting to see not only how flower remedies like work with all of us going through these changes, Mm -hmm. but also just like flowers popping up everywhere. Like um, in March of 2020, we had a, like this weed out front in our building in our landscape where it was always like, Katie, you want me to cut this down? And I'm like, no, no, no. Let the wild things be wild. And that kind of weird, funky weed like thing bloomed in March of 2020. It was the most beautiful flower, like indigo and magenta, like a star. And so we did some research, like, what is this flower? Crown flower. In March of 2020, when everyone was talking about Corona, right? I was like, crown, Corona's. Yeah. And then when I collected the flower essence, it was for like purging fears and purging the tendency to go like, Black, white, right, wrong. Oh, interesting. What we win and we kind of are still in the vibration of yeah, so, so much polar polarity that is going on, you know? And this is a plant that should only be growing in the tropics. We're in the desert in Arizona. You wow. know, so it's like the way that Mother Nature, if you listen, if you look, if you believe it, if you're open to magic, will actually grow and bloom where it's needed. It's nuts. Wow. That's amazing. <laughs> it's totally crazy. And, you know, I'm sure like, you know, with all of the fear and also, you know, you mentioned about like just even having a stronger immune system and stuff, mm-hmm. how like everybody, regardless of any type of belief systems or that, but this collective fear, this collective energy. And then also, you know, just the overall need to be more aware of our health and how important and vital it is that we take care and try to be the best vibrational essence that we can be, right? You know, I think there's not a better time than now. Have you noticed an increase in awareness of your brand? Oh, for sure. Yeah. I mean, I think maybe initially people were just like struggling and maybe looking for something natural without side effects that would help them kind of maintain stability. Um, And funny enough, I think now there's more people interested in, well, how do I accelerate my potential? How do I tap into my greatness? How do I let go of these challenges and limiting beliefs and negative stories that I tell myself how do I move that more gracefully whereas you know 10 15 20 years ago I think maybe we weren't ready to ask those questions on such a profound level and now I feel that as a population worldwide we're becoming more warrior like it's like you know or or we're forced to because things are just yeah. so intense, we can't kind of gloss over it and fake it anymore. It's like, I have to deal with this thing because it's yeah. the heart. And then you know what? If it slips out and I show my vulnerability and others see me break apart, it's also okay. It's okay. Yeah, it is. Because yeah. breaking apart is breaking open. Mm-hmm. Right? Yeah. I mean, I, I, I always think of when, you know, the whole metaphor and the beautiful life of that, you know, the caterpillar that becomes a butterfly. And it's like 
to break out of that darkness, to break that cocoon, is breaking them open into this whole new adventure of a second reality that they get to discover and fly and soar to different heights and explore the world in different ways. And they're no longer trapped to the limiting perception because when you go through a change in life, when you go through a darkness, when you go through that, you know, you'll call it the dark night of the soul or whatever it may be, you know, it's, you can't look at the something the same way. Your vision is completely altered. So you get to explore a new, choose your own adventure. Yeah. And sometimes it's a dark month of the soul or a dark year of the soul or a dark couple years of the soul. You know, I think, I think I used to think like, yeah, maybe it would just be one night, but it's like, wow, this stuff can go on for a long time. And like, speaking of the butterfly, I think it has to actually liquefy in that mm -hmm. cocoon. Like, yeah. can you imagine if our bodies had to turn into liquid in order right. to go to the next? That is just insanity. And then, you know, in terms of looking at ourselves with that level of compassion of like, if that's the kind of transformation we want, then we have to be a little more easy on ourselves and a little more understanding when we go yeah. through temper tantrums or our pains or our fears or resistance, you know, mm -hmm. not easy. Because because our version of that liquefying is might be that, uh, you know, the tower card in the tarot, right? Crumbling down, becoming rubble only to rebuild, right? You know, it's like, it's that wrecking ball effect. And if that's, like you said, if that's what you're truly craving or truly desiring is wanting to see what is your potential, what's next for you, Sometimes everything's got to crumble away, right? Sometimes you got to liquefy and you got to say, all right, I'm ready, you know, and I'm curious enough about this next adventure to get me excited, to allow me to activate, right? You know, I mean, because I think that there's a, there's a fine line between curiosity and fear. And if you can j dive down the curiosity instead of diving into the fear, curiosity will breed excitement where fear will breed, you know, maybe paralyzation or limitations or non-action, you know? Yeah, I think we're overall getting more comfortable with that, right? Because curiosity is like okayness with not knowing the answer, with space, with not knowing what's going to happen without control. And there's just more and more and more unknown. And yeah. so we're like forced to stabilize ourselves to be okay, even if yeah. we don't what's coming next yeah but in that curiosity creates the wanting to know right you know you have a kid and there's a closet and <laughs> if they fear the closet because there's a monster in it they're not going to go to it but if they're curious and wonder i wonder what's in that closet they're going to find a way to get into action to peek in and see right you know so what moves us forward right mm -hmm. yeah so it's like how do i get curious about my dark closet with the monsters inside <laughs> yeah how do i get more curious about finding your amazing products and trying them right you know <laughs> oh so katie let's uh um talk about where people can find you right you know mm -hmm. so the quickest way is on the website which is lotus way lotus like the flower and wei.com you can DM us on social media channels. You can email us. You can call us. Like our whole team is just thrilled to like help people connect with whatever flower they need in the moment. Um, That's so, beautiful. Like your listeners can feel free to reach out anytime. Awesome. Thank you. And if you had to share one last thing, what would it be? Mm. Mm. There's so many things I'm like locating. What's the perfect thing? The perfect thing. I guess I would just say, um, I would talk about the magic of the peony flower. Okay. The, the peony flower is for abundance and possibility. And sometimes we have in our energetic DNA messages around scarcity, what's possible, what's not possible. And uh, maybe just as like an emissary of the peony flower for today that um, you can rewrite your DNA, you know, just like how they talk about epigenetics. Like just because your parents had heart attacks doesn't mean you're going to get them. It's yeah. basic lifestyle. So 
no matter what kind of experience you come from or what kind of background or what you've been up to, there is tremendous abundance and tremendous potential. And just to encourage that, you know, within each one of us to keep believing and striving for the sense of like, so grateful for all the things we have and the abundance of possibility and um, not letting ourselves get too crunched down by uh, challenges in life Mm -hmm. to also recognize that there's just so much more out there and so much more available to us than we even know. Mm. That feels good. Ah. Well, thank you so much, Katie. It's been a pleasure. So happy to spend time with you. I would like, would love to visit your spaces. Yes. When next time you're out in LA, you know, it's just a hop, skip and a jump from you. Six Mm -hmm. hour car ride. Come on over. You know, I'm sure you'll see some beautiful flowers on your path and way if you decide to drive, you know. If you come to Arizona, come visit. You can sit oh. in the sauna and take a flower essence bath and have a picnic on the roof. <laughs> oh, awesome. I am down. Thank you so much. And until next time, um, everybody, if you like this, please like, comment, subscribe. If you're watching this on YouTube by chance, please really do that. Just like a thumbs up, a little thing. We got to start getting that little momentum. And even if you're checking us out on audio format, you know, still those comments help spread the, the information and allow for more people to get connected to beautiful people like Katie and her amazing Lotus Way products. So thank you so much. And until next time, bye now. Thanks for joining us. If you enjoyed this conversation, please like it, subscribe and share it with your friends. If you want to hear more about what we have going on and happening online or in in the neighborhood, check out liberateyourself.com and sign up for our mailing list. Uh, Also follow us on Facebook and Instagram at Liberate Yourself. It's you are self, U-R-S-E-L-F. Until next time, be powerful, be magical and be free.